Hello, future RMDs. Welcome to the discussion of Filaria. Our learning objectives are as follows. Uh, recall the morphology, life cycle, pathogenesis, epidemiology, and of different Filaria and distinguish the diagnostic features of different filaria. Like, <clears throat> like what I've said in, in previous discussion, filaria is also a nematode. It just so happened that filaria is a tissue invading nematode. And aside from, aside from it is known to be a tissue invading nematode, it, it is also capable of invading the lymph nodes now this is not true with filaria hindi siya round worms nematode siya but not a round worm because our filarial species our filarial forms or filarial parasites are flat but they are classified as nematodes so the following are our filarial species. Number one, we have Wachereria bancrofti, also known as the Bancroft filaria, Brugia malayi, the Malayan filaria, Loa Loa, the eye worm or the African eye worm, Oncocerca volvulus, the uh, blinding filaria, Mansonella ozardi, the New World filaria, and Mansonella perstans, the perstans filaria. Okay, so when we said filaria, this is a group of nematodes that live in the tissue or lymphatic system, like what I've said a while ago. No? Yung, mga naunang fil yung mga naunang nematodes in our, in our previous discussion are old nematodes, but intestinal. However, some of them are also tissue nematodes. Okay? Elephantiasis is common symptoms experience of a patient with filariasis. No? This is an enlargement of the skin, enlargement of the skin, and subcutaneous tissues. Elephantiasis is common in, in, in filariasis because the dead filaria, the dead filariform, no? obstruct in the lymph nodes, causing the lymph nodes to swell, causing the lymph nodes to uh, inflame. Kaya siya nagkakameron ng elephantiasis. If you see a patient with elephantiasis at nag-color black or parang mayroong mga scale scales, it is not because of the inflammation of the lymph nodes, but rather it is due to secondary bacterial infections. Now, once we said microfilaria or microfilariae, that is the larval stage of tafilaria. It is nice to know that filariforms or that the filaria has what we call periodicity. When we said periodicity, that's the time when and where they can be collected or the time where they can cause infection. Is it a nocturnal, diurnal, or non-periodic parasite? Later, as we go along, we are going to discuss what is those periodicity. Shit. Shit is one of the useful parameters in order for us to detect and identify what filarial form is present. Is it a Ucherere Bancrofti? Is it a Rugia Malayi? Sheeted ba siya or unsheeted? Like what I've said, this is nematode. Therefore, meron siyang separate sexes. Meron siyang male and meron siyang female. Creamy white, thread-like appearance is your adult. Sometimes, sinasabi nga itong threadworm eh. Pero, ang threadworm talaga ay yung ating strongyloides. A thread-like appearance to be better. But threadworms is your 
strongylitis. In terms of size, well, definitely the same thing as your nematodes. Mas malaki ang size ng female. Because male is often half size of the female. Now, when we said microfilarie, once again, this is slender and very, may vary and overlap in size. Ngayon, what will be the key diagnostic, the key features in order for us to detect, in order for us to know what microfilarie is that? Number one is the distribution of the nuclei and the presence or an absent, absence of sheet. In the concluding part of this video, I'm going to discuss the difference between Mucereria bancrofti, Brugia malayi, Pancocerca volvulus, and Loa loa that will help you to identify, that will help you to differentiate the four parasites in terms of their sheet, the presence of sheet, and the presence of the nuclei on the tip of the tail. Now, unlike the other nematodes, this parasite requires vector. Okay? This parasite requires vector. And the vector no, vary among the parasite. Later, we're going to discuss. Remember, guys, that the larvae migrate up to appropriate tissues and complete development into adults. That's why the process may, up, may take up to years. That's why in the initiation of the vector, it is not necessarily that after a week, after a month, you have the infection. Because the development of the adult worm takes years. Now, furthermore, fertilized adult female worm lay live microfilariae. Okay, merong, merong, merong video na nagpapakita on how the eosinophils attack microfilariae. Okay, kasi live. And in order for you to see a live filariae or motile filariae, you have to prepare a fresh collected blood. A smear of a fresh collected blood in order for you to see the movement of the microfilariae. Okay? So remember that microfilariae take up residence in blood and dermis. The vector ingests microfilariae during the blood meal. So this is the morphological form being ingested by the vector that will develop into the vector. Okay? the larval development in vector, and then cycle repeats. Therefore, vector is important in the life cycle of our filaria. Now, like what I said, in order for us to detect the presence of this parasite, we have to collect samples at appropriate time because it has a periodicity. Kapag sinabi natin nocturnal occurs at night, diurnal during the day, subperiodic timing of occurrence not clear. Pwede sa umaga, pwede sa gabi. Sino kaya yung nocturnal? Who are those diurnal? And who are those the subperiodic? Later, we're going to differentiate them and identify sino sila. Okay? And since this is a blood or resides in the bloodstream, blood can be the, in the specimen of choice. And aside from blood, you can also use tissue scrapings of infected nodules. Okay? So those are the specimen of choice. Blood or infected nodules. Well, depending on the parasite. Okay? Uh, the primary diagnosis is the use of blood using a gem-sustained blood smear or a tissue-stained nodules or a, a gem-sustained tissue biopsy or nodules. Now, aside from that, we also have your nut concentration. Nut concentration uses blood and formalin and then fix it 
no, in the slide and then visualize it. Remember, not concentration for your filaria. Okay? I still remember my students when they join quiz show and one of the question was not concentration or not technique is ideal for the detection of what parasite. I have one activity when I ask them to prepare a song wherein the lyrics of the song must be something about parasitology and the topic that they, they chose is filaria. And one of the lines in the song says, na technique is for filaria. Hindi nila nalimutan yun. Okay? Because of that song, I was able to have a point for that. Okay? Now, the photogenesis and clinical symptoms of filaria may vary among the parasite because of the habitat, because of the area where they invade. For example, granulomatous lesions, eosinophilia, fever, chills, elephantiasis. Like for example, loa loa. Loa loa can, can cause elephantiasis, but loa loa can cause problem in the cutaneous tissue or in the tissue in the ocular area, but not capable of causing elephantiasis. No caliber swelling, the transient swelling of the subcutaneous tissues, eye involvement. Uh, area Bancrofti cannot cause an eye involvement, but loa loa and oncocerca can be. Kaya nga nagvavari, depending on the parasite and blindness. But of course, if there is an involvement of the eye, definitely there will also be involvement of the blindness. Okay, so like what I've said, these are under nematode, class nematodes or nematoda, phylum nemahelminthes, but classified as blood and tissue species. Okay, so first parasite that we are going to discuss is Wachereria bancrofti microfilaria, sheeted with absence of nuclei at the tip of the tail. Take note, sheeted, no? sheeted with absence of nuclei at the tip of the tail. Usually 240 to 300 micrometers per long. As I said a while ago, the presence of the sheet and the presence of nucleus at the tip of the tail will help us to identify the parasite present. And for Wachereria bancrofti, microfilaria, that is sheeted, absent of nuclei at the tip of the tail. Typically, male is shorter than female, which measures 20 to 40 micrometers, while the female is 40 to 100 millimeters. Okay. White in color and thread like Bakit po siya naging, bakit po siya naging purplish in color? Because of the stain. Okay? Now take note, people of God, that Wachereria bancrofti is usually seen in a gem-sustained peripheral blood smear. Okay? Now, other techniques for the demonstration of the microfilaria of your Wachereria bancrofti is a, using filter heparin blood using nucleophore filter to filter the microfilaria, okay? Not technique is also recommended. Take note, people, that this is a nocturnal parasite. Therefore, the appropriate time of collecting blood is usually between 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. Serological tests and polymerase chain reactions have been developed for the, de for the detection of your microfilaria of Wachereria bancrofti. Now, in terms of life cycle, like what I've said, this requires vector. And the vector of Wachereria bancrofti is mosquito. It can be Qlex, it can be Ides, it can be Anaphilis. Okay? Now, take note that these vectors, no? that these vectors are important in the larval stage of the parasite. Now, the larval development of the parasite occurs into the mosquito. 
the mosquito, can be Culex, Aedes, and Anopheles. Since this is a vector-borne parasite, therefore, the mode of transmission is through insect bite. The insects or the mosquito bites, no? the mosquito will then uh, deposit no? the, the larval stage to the humans, leading to the migration of this uh, microfilariae or filari filariform to humans, to the bloodstream of the humans, going to the lymph nodes where it will reside. Usually, Wuchereria bancrofti will reside on the inguinal area or inguinal lymph node near the groin. Okay? And sa mga singet, usually, doon po siya mag- Pericide. That's why, no, that's why a patient have having Wachereria bancrofti will develop swelling of the lymph nodes that causes swelling of the lower extremities, which is referred to be your elephantiasis. Okay, the microfilariae. Ay, balik, balik pa pala muna tayo dito. So once that the parasite you know, resides already in the bloodstream, another mosquito will do a blood meal injecting the microfilariae or uh, ingesting the microfilariae and the microfilariae will develop into the mosquito you know, shed shoots, penetrates mosquito's mid gut and migrate to the thoracic, thoracic muscle of the mosquito, and then uh, developing from larvae stage 1 to larvae stage 3, which will be in the salivary gland of the mosquito or in the proboscis of the mosquito for the uh, ingest, for the inj for injecting to humans to initiate another infection. So again, the microfilariae and eosinophilia usually recovered in blood samples. Now take note that physical examination is also important in order to see if there is a enlarged lymph nodes. Like what I've said a while ago, in the inguinal area or in the groin area. That's why possible po ang magkameron ng elephantiasis in the lower extremities because the parasite resides in the lymph nodes in the inguinal region. Usually, this parasite is asymptomatic. Usually, this parasite is self-limiting. Okay? Now, the blockage or the death of the microfilaria in the lymph nodes causes the elephantiasis. And that is what we call Brancofian filariasis. Remember guys that in general Brancofian filariasis is, uh, resembles fever, chills, eosinophilia. Okay? Now additional possible symptoms of Brancofian filariasis includes granulomatous lesions because of the deposition of the microfilaria, lymphogenitis, inflammation of the lymph nodes, and lymphadenopathy. Now remember that a patient with elephantiasis is common to uh, secondary bacterial infections. B uh, bacterial infections with streptococcus uh, species that causes the black discoloration of the skin. Genitals and breast may also be involved. Okay. Now, this is what I am keep on telling once the adult form of the parasite died. So there is what we call calcification or formation of the abscess, leading to what we call secondary bacterial infections. 
These are all illustrations of a patient with elephantiasis. As I said a while ago, usually in the groin area or in the inguinal area, that's why lower extremity elephantiasis in the legs. As you can see also in this illustration, there is an involvement of as inflammation or swelling in the testes of male. If you were able to watch one of the episodes of Jessica Soho, it was featured there, the elephantiasis. They call it at, as lymphatic filariasis. Why lymphatic? Because it resides on the lymph nodes. Now, the following are the drugs. No? Uh, it, diethyl carba, carbamazine or the DEC, ivermectin or stromectol, surgical removal of the lymph, uh, surgical removal of the low of the uh, parasite, no? Unsa spaced boots or elastic bandages, and simple elevation can do. However, like what I've said, in the first few years of the infection, asymptomatic, walang nararamdaman yung pasyente until such time na lumalaki na lang yung kanyang groin area, namamaga na lang, na nagiging dahilan kung bakit nagkokos ng severe infection. Remember that lymphatic filariasis is one of the neglected tropical diseases, not only in the Philippines but worldwide. Hindi binibigyan ng importansya. Okay, so for the prevention and control, since this is a vector-borne parasite, then eradication and elimination of mosquito breeding grounds should be used. Insecticides no, should be used. Now for Brugia malayi, this is also sheeted, sheeted with two nuclei at the tip of the tail. Sheeted with two distinct nuclei at the tip of the tail. This is what I asked, I tell to my students every time I am discussing Brugia malayi. Letter B. Letter B, merong dot, dalawang dot sa letter B. Okay? And that is the nucleus at the tip of the tail. Usually, 200 to 280 micrometers long, and it is sheeted. Now, in terms of size, well, definitely, female is longer than male. Female measures typically 53 micrometers with uh, in length, and then male is 24 micrometers. Again, how are we going to differentiate Brugia malayi from on, from Pocherry Van Crofty? Both of them are sheeted, but Brugia malayi has two distinct nucleus on the tip of the tail. As, I, uh, as, as a lie or compared to or similar to your Pocherry Van Crofty, our method of choice is fresh examination of blood or fresh gem-sustained blood smear you know, to detect the presence of the parasite. Now, this is typically nocturnal, no? subperiodic, or possible. The same thing with your Wachereri Van Crofty, not technique and serological test is also possible. They have the same life cycle ng Brugia Malayi at saka ni Wuchereria Van Crofty. Ano lang yung major difference? The major difference in the life cycle of Brugia Malayi and Wuchereria Van Crofty is their vector. Ano yung vector kay Wuchereria Van Crofty? Teolex, Aedes, Anopheles. Ano po yung, ano po yung mga vector pagdating kay Brugia Malayi? We have Aedes, Anopheles, and Mansonia Ply. Okay? Aedes, Anopheles, and Mansonia. Those are the vectors of Brugia Malayi. But take note, almost the same life cycle with Wachereria Bancrofti. Now take note that Aedes and Anopheles are both vector ni Brugia Malayi and Wuchereria Bancrofti. Therefore, it is possible that these mosquitoes can transmit Wuchereria Bancrofti and Brugia Malayi at the same time. 
and that is what we call co-infection. Okay, and that is what we call co-infections. Now the same thing, the adult worm resides in the lymphatics that causes them to inflame. Felines and monkeys are at risk for contracting parasites, even though humans are considered as the primary definitive host of Bugia malayi. Elephantiasis is also possible. Lower extremities elephantiasis is also possible. However, most commonly, most commonly, upper extremity elephantiasis. But we are not eliminating the elephantiasis in the lower extremities. That could also be possible. However, the involvement of genitalias are less common, unlike in what's your area, Bancrofty. Like uh, Brancophilaria, malaria, Malayan filaria, is usually asymptomatic at first. Okay? And then the patient will have or will experience fever that take months to years to develop. Okay? Now, the other symptoms includes granulomatous lesions, chills, lymphadenopathy, lymphogenitis, elephantiasis of legs, and elephantiasis of genitals is less common. The treatment is again uh, the use of diethyl carbamazine or the DEC or anti or other anti-inflammatory drugs is possible. The, the prevention and control is almost synonymous to Wachereria bancrofti. Again, Wachereria bancrofti sheeted absence of nuclei at the tip of the tail. Uh, Rugia walagi sheeted presence of nuclei distinct two distinct nuclei at the tip of the tail. Now leading to the third filarial form or filarial worm we have your loa loa. Loa loa is known to be your eye worm or African eye worm. Take note of this. This is sheeted with the presence of nuclei at the tip of the tail. Continuous, continuous row of mic of nucleus at the tip of the tail. Loa loa, sheeted with continuous nuclei at the tip of the tail. Usually measures 248 to 300 micrometers long. Again, this is your African eye worm. As you can see, the eye, uh, the worm is being excre uh, excreted or withdrawn from the eye. Okay, again, female is longer than male which measures 38 to 72 millimeters as compared to male, which is 28 to 35 millimeters. The sample of choice will definitely will be the use of gem-sustained blood smear. We cannot use uh, tissue biopsy kasi nasa eye siya. Okay? So gem-sustained blood smear can be used. For your Wuchereria Bancrofti and your lower lo and your Abrugia malayi, pwede doon yung tissue biopsy. Okay? Now, nut technique is also possible. Like what I've said, periodicity should be considered because that is the optimum time to collect the blood sample. For our loa loa, it exhibits the urinal vibration, which means no, the blood collection should be done between 10.15 to 2.15, 10.15 a.m. to 2.15 p.m. Now, the adult worm can be extracted from the eye. Now, the, uh, the presence of eosinophilia and calabar swelling or transient subcutaneous swelling aids in the diagnosis. For serological, serological tests, this is also available. Now, for the life cycle, almost similar. Pahalos pare-parehas naman sila ng life cycle. No? As the vector is important in transmitting and allows the continuity of the larval stage of the parasite development. It just so happened that their vector differs from one another. Again, 
as a review. For Rotararia Bancrofty, we have your Culex, Edes, and Anaphilis. For your uh, Brugia Malayi, we have your Mansonia, we have your Edes, and we have your Anaphilis. Now for our Loa Loa, our vector is the Chrysops fly. Okay, the Chrysops fly serves as the vector. Now take note, instead of, uh, they can also invade the lymph nodes, but usually they resides in the subcutaneous tissues. Okay, for loa loa. Proritus is also possible and localized pain in the site, in the bite site of the vector. As like what I've said, calabar swelling is a useful test or a useful uh, symptoms no? in order to detect the patient with loyasis. Okay. Now remember, since this is an African eye worm, the worm may be noticeable when seen migrate under the conjunctiva of the eye, crossing under the skin of the bridge of the nose. As you can see in the illustration uh, showing, uh, in the illustration I showed, in the previous slide. Okay, that is what we call the extraction of the eye worm in the eye. Okay, so the laboratory or the treatment is the surgical removal of the adult worms and using the drug diethyl carbamazine or DEC. Leading to our next parasite, which is your Oncocerca volvulus, which is also a eye worm, no? But this is referred to be the blinding filaria, or sometimes referred as the river blinding, blindness filaria. Okay? So again, Rosheraria bancrofti is sheeted, non nuclei at the tip of the tail. Brugia malai is sheeted with two distinct nuclei at the tip of the tail. Loa loa is sheeted with continuous nuclei at the tip of the tail. Now we have your on Coserca volvulus, which is unsheeted and do and don't have, you no, know, don't have uh, nuclei at the tip of the tail. Okay, unsheeted with no nuclei at the tip of the tail. Again, female is larger or longer than male on Coserca volvulus. The same thing with the other, no, they are all flat. They are all flat. Okay. Uh, laboratory diagnosis for Oncocerca volvulus includes the use of a gem sustained skin skin nips, no? In order to obtain uh, in order to obtain uncontaminated sample, skin nips are collected with a little blood as possible. Okay? Adult worm of your Oncocerca volvulus can be seen during ophthalmic examination. The same thing doon sa ating loa-loa. Yun nga lang, yung Oncocerca volvulus, usually nandun siya sa loob ng mata eh. Itong loa-loa naman, nandun siya sa may labas ng mata. Okay? So, almost the same life cycle. Just so happen that it resides in the subcutaneous tissue near the uh, ocular area. Okay. Now, uh, the other difference, uh, uh, the other, or the one of the notable difference is the vector. Again, ano yung vector ng Wachereri Bancrofti? Aedes, Culex, and your Anophilis. Brugia Malai, Aedes, Anophilis, and Mansonia. Kay Loa Loa, Chrysops Fly. Pagdating po natin kay Oncocerca volvulus, our vector is the black fly. Okay? Our vector is the black fly. Genus simulium. Simulium. Okay? Species. Now remember guys that one of the notable thing about the life cycle of Oncocerca volvulus is that the adult worm encapsulate in the subcutaneous fibrous tumors and mate. 
which resulting in the migration of the microfilaria throughout the infected nodules, including subcutaneous tissues, skin, into the eyes, and rarely seen in the peripheral blood. That's why the specimen of choice is subcutaneous tissue. Okay. Uh, onchocery onchoceriasis or river blindness okay, is usually chronic no, and non-fatal condition wherein there is a localized symptoms affecting the uh, eye no, and the nodule involvement. Take note that this is also prone to secondary bacterial infections due to scratching. And the involvement of the eye, no, involvement of the eye can lead into what we call blindness. Ivermectin is the treatment of choice for the microfilariae and long-term treatment may be necessary because of lifelong span of the adult. Prevention and control will definitely personal protection and controlling the vector breeding grounds. Leading to our fifth filarial parasite, that is your on Mon uh, Monsonella ozardi. Again, there is an absent sheet and numerous arrangement of the nuclei, but does not extend on the tip of the tail. Usually, female is 85 to 80 millimeters, an average of 70, which is larger than male. Monsonella ozardi worm is usually unknown on location pagdating sa tao. The specimen of choice for your Monsonella ozardi includes the stained peripheral blood smear using Gemesis stain. Periodicity includes non-periodic. Now, uh, the life cycle is almost similar with the only difference between its vector. The vector of this uh, parasite includes similium black fly, the same thing with your uh, Oncocerta volvulus, and uh, culicoides, no? Culicoides, okay? Are the vectors of your Mansonella asardi. Okay, so we have your culicoides and similium black fly. Now take note that the microfilariae found in the blood and capillaries and extravascular spaces of the skin. Again, the microfilariae can be found in the blood, capillaries, and intravascular spaces of the skin. Now take note once that the adult emerge, it may reside in the body cavities, including the visceral fats and mesenteries, but it is still undocumented. By the way, before I forgot, urine can also be used as the sample of choice for filarial worms, most especially if the urine is a cayuric urine. Okay, urticasia is possible in the New World filariasis lymphadenitis, skin itching, and uh, eosinophilia, as well as artrigalias. No? Now take note that adult worm cause minimal damage to the areas they inhabit. And last but not the least is the treatment. Again, uh, for asymptomatic, treatment is not usually indicated, but for symptomatic one, the use of DEC or diethyl carbamazine is the recommended drug of choice. And last but not the least is our Manzanella peristans, which we're in. Uh, there is an absence of shit and numerous, uh, what you call this, numerous nuclei that extend on the tip of the tail. Typically, female filaria form of your Manzanella peristans measures 82 millimeters longer than male, which is 43 millimeters. The location of Manzanella peristans in the body is the peritoneal and pleural cavities. That's why it is termed to be the mesenterial filarial form or filarial worm. Blood is the specimen of choice no? and there is no periodicity. Now, in terms of the life cycle, it is almost similar to the life cycle of Manzanella peristans. The only difference is the vector for Manzanella, uh, Manzanella ozardi, okay? Si Manzanella ozardi, ano yung kanyang life, ano yung kanyang vector? Si 
colicoides at saka si simillion fly. Pagdating po natin kay Manzanillo peristans, you only have your colicoides as your vector. Now take note that in Manzanillo peristans, I involvement is common and human serves as the primary definitive host. Okay? But the incubation period is still unknown. Okay, for instance, filariasis includes minor allergic reactions with moderate eosinophilia. Calabar swelling, the same thing that is seen in Loa Loa is also possible because of the involvement of the eye. Headache, edema, lymphatic discomfort is also possible. Of course, for the treatment is the use of the EC and uh, other medications can be used such as mebendazole. So this is what I am telling a while ago. This table will help you to differentiate your filarial worm. Uchireri Bancrofti resides in the lymphatic. The following are the vector. Culex, Edes, Anopheles. Specimen is blood. Again, the microfilaria is sheeted. Absence of nuclei on the tip of the tail. Periodicity is nocturnal. Brugia malayi resides in the lymphatics. Edes, Anopheles, and Mansonia are the vector. Blood is the sample of choice. And the microfilaria resembles sheeted with two distinct nuclei at the tip of the tail. Brugia malayi can be subperiodic or nocturnal. Loa loa is resides on the subcutaneous and the vector includes Chrysops fly. The specimen of choice is blood. Okay. And the microfilaria resembles sheeted nucleus, a sheeted tail with nuclei that continues on the tip of the tail. The periodicity of loa loa is diurnal. On concerta volvulus, subcutaneous, vector, black fly, okay, or colicoides. Okay. Uh, yeah, black fly or the simulian fly. I'm sorry, the simulian fly. The sample of choice is skin nips, okay, and unsheeted, no nuclei on the tip of the tail. Blood cannot be sampled or blood cannot be used for Oncocerca volvulus, and there is no periodicity. Now, take note, people of God, that this table is very helpful in order for you to differentiate your filarial worm. Now, in the Philippines, like what I'm telling, now, there, is, there are cases of filarial worms in the Philippines. And these are the regions where lymphatic filariasis are reported. In region 4A and region 4B. For region 4A, for Calabarazon, it is only the Quezon province with known uh, cases of lymphatic filariasis. Usually, these are seen in rural areas. Okay? Uh, for region 4B, the Mimaropa, Marinduque, Occidental and Oriental Mindoro, Palawan, and Ramblon. And then the rest, just for your information, just have to read where are the provinces, where, uh, what are the provinces in the Philippines with the case, reported cases of lymphatic filariasis. And that is the end of our discussion. I hope you learned. Thank you and God bless you all.